Imagine this, an ancient monster, known to us only through a single head, no spine, no legs, no tail, just a skull nearly a meter long, weighing more than the 20 liter water jug you often carry. Yet, from that unique fossilized bone fragment, scientists boldly declared, this is the largest carnivorous land mammal to ever roam the earth. Its name is Andrewsarchus. And this is not a fictional story. Real life is sometimes even more thrilling and unbelievable than TV dramas. The story begins in 1923 when Roy Chapman Andrews' famous expedition meticulously followed the cracks in the dry mud of Mongolia's legendary Gobi Desert. They arrived with great anticipation to find dinosaur eggs, evidence of the bygone era of giant reptiles. But fate led them to a completely different discovery, a mystery still debated to this day. Instead of dinosaur eggs, they found a colossal skull with teeth still razor sharp, defying time. Henry Fairfield Osborne, one of the most brilliant paleontologists of his time, upon seeing those two terrifying jaws, did not hesitate to declare, this is definitely a huge carnivore, no doubt about it. He named it after the expedition's guide, Andrew Zarkis, literally meaning Andrew's ruler. Since then, more than a century has passed, but we still only have that single head. All the knowledge, all the speculation we have about this mysterious animal stems from the mere 80 the redundantin kilometers length of that skull. Hard to believe, isn't it? A tiny piece, yet it opens up a whole world of endless theories and debates. So, with just a single skull, how can scientists magically reconstruct the shape of an animal weighing a ton? They use a method that seems simple but is extremely complex. Proportional comparison, that is, they will take the head-to-body ratio from its closest surviving relatives. Sounds reasonable, right? But the headache here is, no one has yet dared to definitively confirm who Andrew Zarkis's closest relative is. This is where the scientific battle begins. One group of scientists proposed using the Mesonychid model, a group of ancient carnivorous mammals that looked quite like wolves, but had hooves. Based on the Mesonychid's head accounting for about 25% of its body length, Andrew Zarkis would be nearly 3.5 meters long, about 1.5 meters tall and weigh over a ton. Imagine, it's almost as big as a Kia morning without the engine, a massive block of flesh and bone. However, another group vehemently disagreed. They argued that Andrew Zarkis seemed more closely related to Intelodonts, an ancient species of wild boar with an extremely fierce appearance. With Intelodonts, the head only accounts for about 17% of the total body length. If this ratio is applied, our mysterious animal could exceed 4 meters in length and weigh approximately 1.5 tons. You see, just a slight difference in the assumption about relatives created a weight difference of up to 500 kilocores, equivalent to an entire adult cow. This 500 kilocor difference is not just a number. It's the reason why two scientific schools of thought have been arguing for 30 long years. Just one centimeter on the skull, when multiplied by tons of flesh and bone, can completely change the picture of a species. Therefore, whenever someone asks, what did Andrew Zarkis look like? The most accurate, most honest answer is always, it was very large, but we are also eagerly waiting to find more new bones. It shows the patience and sometimes the humility of science when faced with fragmented pieces of the past. 
The structure of Andrews Arcus's jaw is also a no less controversial topic. Its jaw is long, narrow, but quite shallow, lacking the depth of many other predators. Its canines are curved and sharp, while its molars are broad, with rough, abrasive surfaces, much like a grinding stone. Sounds strange, doesn't it? Mechanical models have been built to analyze its bite force. The results are astonishing. The bite force at the tip of the snout could reach 6,000 newtons, equivalent to an adult saltwater crocodile, one of the strongest biters on the planet. With such a terrifying bite force, the idea that it could snatch prey, tear it apart, and then crush even the bones is entirely plausible. A true carnivorous machine, no doubt. However, the very structure of its teeth has made many scientists reconsider. Andrews Arcus's molars typically show even wear, rather than the deep, sharp cuts found on the teeth of other specialized predators. This has led to an opposing hypothesis. Could Andrews Arcus have been an omnivore, or even a scavenger? With teeth like grinding stones, it could easily crush turtle shells, snail shells, gnaw on washed-up fish carcasses, and even hard, dry palm fruits. It was like a mobile dumpster of the Eocene ecosystem. After much debate, a compromise hypothesis, also known as the super-diverse hypothesis, emerged and gained widespread acceptance. This hypothesis suggests that Andrews Arcus was not at all picky about its diet. It would hunt when fresh meat was available, seizing every opportunity to find a meal. But when food was scarce, it would not hesitate to dig and gnaw on whatever remained, even if it was just shells and carcasses. This explains why it could survive for nearly 10 million years across the coastal regions of Eurasia at that time. A true king, not only because of its strength, but also because of its excellent adaptability, never being picky about food. When Osborne first announced the discovery of Andrews Arcus, he immediately placed it in the Mesonychidae family, a group of hoofed mammals that possessed the sharp teeth of a carnivore, earning them the nickname Prehistoric Wolves. The image of a giant wolf with hooves became deeply ingrained in the minds of many generations of scientists. However, the 21st century has witnessed a true revolution in paleontology, not limited to bones and teeth. This was the molecular analysis revolution. Scientists successfully extracted mitochondrial DNA from bone samples of entelodonts, ancient wild boars found in the same region. And the results astonished everyone. Entelodonts turned out to be more closely related to Andrews Arcus than even Mesonychids. And here's the most mind-bending part. Entelodonts, according to molecular analysis, are classified into the Cetacodonomorpha clade, an evolutionary branch that includes hippos and whales. You heard that right, whales. This means that a creature once thought to be a prehistoric wolf could actually be a running hippo with carnivorous teeth. Just imagine a ton-heavy wild boar with a long snout, sharp tusks, and the ability to run faster than a human. That's the image scientists are grappling with when thinking about Andrew Zarkis. It's a vivid, surprising testament to the scientific community's running joke. Relatives are never alike at the evolutionary party. Sometimes, the closest relationships lie in the most unexpected places, just waiting for technology and fresh perspectives to be revealed. Every empire, no matter how mighty, eventually falls, and Andrew Zarkis was no exception. Towards the end of the Eocene epoch, Earth entered a period of drastic climate change, which geologists call the Grand Coupure, 
or oh great cut. The global average temperature dropped by as much as 8 degrees Celsius in just a few hundred thousand years, a fleeting moment on the geological time scale. Vast tropical forests, once home to many species, gradually receded, giving way to arid, expansive grasslands. This change in habitat profoundly impacted the food chain. Large carnivorous animals, which were once diverse and abundant, especially those dependent on forest environments, were pushed into extreme regions or faced fierce competition from smaller, more agile relatives. In the race for survival energy, Andrew Zarkis, with its enormous daily food intake, gradually lost ground. Competitors like hyenodontids and amphicyanids, smaller predators that were more efficient in the new environment, gradually defeated the former ruler. The youngest identified fossil of Andrew Zarkis dates back approximately 36 million years ago. After that, not a single tooth, not a single bone fragment of this species was recorded again. It vanished from the map of life, leaving only its mysterious skull as the last evidence that a mighty four-legged wolf pig empire once roamed across Asia. Its disappearance is a harsh reminder of the cruelty of natural selection. We only have a single skull, a unique fossilized bone. But from that single piece, we have journeyed together through millions of years, back to the distant Eocene epoch, to try and understand Andrew's ruler, a giant, mysterious predator. Andrew's Arcus is not only one of the largest carnivorous mammals to have ever existed, it is also a powerful testament to the constant change in science, showing that what we believe to be true today may be viewed differently tomorrow. Who knows, tomorrow perhaps an archaeologist will accidentally discover its leg bones and announce that Andrew Zarkis actually walked on two legs. I will still be sitting here, recounting that surprising story to you. If you found this video helpful and interesting, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on the next journey of discovery with me.